Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for this Get Ready With Me using some new to me products. If you'd like to see that, please keep watching. If you saw the haul that I did, you'll know that I picked up a lot of things from Chantecaille as well as other brands. So I have some eyeshadow, bronzer, what else did I use that was new? Eyeliner, eyebrow products. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm not sure really worry on the tan spectrum at this point. So I do have Le Beige, the Healthy Glow Foundation in B50, which, no, BD51, which is on the more tan side. So this is too deep for me in the winter, but it might be okay now, so let's try it. If not, I have the Tom Ford, this one, standing by that we can mix in if we need to. Shiseido brush. One of you recently let me know that this worked really well on the Cushion Foundation by Chantecaille, which I use it with. Actually, I use this with everything. It just makes every foundation better. Maybe we'll take a little bit of this Tom Ford Tawny just to put it around the, let's see, my forehead's gonna need that, I think. Yeah, that looks like a better shade up there. Okay, I think that worked out actually quite well. So let's go under the eye. Back to the Sizzly. I went on my eyelids today with that. I don't know why, but let's see how that works today. Okay, let's go in with La Paris. Clay de Peau Mocha. But I would love to know what you're interested in seeing or just vlogs in general. They are my favorite kind of video to make. I love these, but I really, well, okay, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say travel videos are probably my most favorite to make, not just because of the travel part, but I love the style and the, it's a different skill set, I think, filming travel videos. Yeah, so I'd love to know what else you would like to see for a vlog. I've done them at home and I actually like to watch vlogs that take place at home from other people. I'd love to know what you're interested in seeing vlog wise. Yeah, my dark spots are a little bit deeper than they have been just because of the vacation. And now that the rest of my skin tone's kind of going back to where it used to be, the dark spots aren't. And I knew that might be a problem, but we'll just keep working on it like always. and. Hopefully we'll see some improvement. I'm just gonna do an easy kind of setting with, with what, what shall I use? Hummingbird powder. Okay, let's go ahead now with the eyebrow product. This one, this one is new to me from Chantecaille. It's the Waterproof Brow Definer in Oak Brown. It reminds me a little bit of the Schumer one. Reminds me of the Chanel one. <laughs> um, and I love the Gucci one, but I just wanted to try this because I've been wanting to try it. I like that it has a cool tone to it though. Okay, so it's not as waxy as I thought it would be just initially. I really like the cool tone. It's almost the same shade as my brows, which can be difficult to find. And then I can just turn it on its side and fill in really quickly like this, which is nice. Okay, so this one I can see, you can go quite heavy handed easily if you're not careful. And then I'm turning it on the um, lengthwise, so it's tapered here on this side. Oops. One thing with these sword shaped brow products is sometimes they get dull. Well, not sometimes, they do get dull on the end. In fact, I think I read Shuomura does some sharpening of their traditional sword pencils um, in Japan because, well, we'll see how this goes, but that's the only thing I think might be an issue. We'll see how it goes. And then what you end up with is a rounded end here. So you don't have as much precision as you do when it's brand new like this. It is adhering quite easily though. So sometimes waxier formulas can take a little bit of effort to get on the skin here. This one's doing a nice job. Nice spoolie on this. 
it's soft, but it does a nice job of separating. I like that. Yeah, this is one of the best shade matches for my brow hair color. Okay, I haven't put the brow gel on yet, but it went kind of bold here. But I don't know if you can see, I inadvertently created some individual brow hairs right in the front here, so you can do that, at least with a new one, because it is so sharp on the end. Not sharp, but it's got more definition on the end. So it is possible, depending on how that is um, looking <laughs> over here. I think, again, once it gets kind of dull on the end, it might be difficult to do that. We'll see. And then I wanna go in with the brow gel. So I do love the one that's the tint, but I picked up the clear one. Actually, with this brow pencil, I think clear might be good because we're already looking quite bold. So we have a shorter side and a longer side. I'm not quite sure the difference. I'm gonna use the shorter one for now. I do like the Sukiu Clear Brow Gel. That one's really nice. So we'll see how this one goes. I didn't go in with the real skin like I normally did because I accidentally, accidentally put some Sizzly up here, but it feels a little bit, um, not as primed for eyeshadow. So I am gonna go in with a little bit of the real skin in 4C. Okay, let's go in with this beautiful shade Lilac Rose. I think that's really pretty, especially on brown eyes. So Shavala actually looks a little bit like Amethyst to me, shade-wise. I don't know, I've just watched them next to each other. Let's see, I'm just curious now. They do look similar, although Shavala's a little bit more brown, but that's Amethyst, the eyeliner, and then this is Shavala pretty. So we're going to go in with that first. So I love these single shadows that they have. That is really beautiful together. I love that combination because I've been loving cool shades recently anyway. And even though Shogola has a little bit of shimmer, it's not shimmer, there's something reflective in there. It's very gentle. No distinct particles in there. So I went a little bit further out than I wanted to. I like that it's a little bit closer here, so we'll fix that in a bit. I'm gonna add mascara. I think I'm gonna go in with Violet Damask and then Amethyst, just because I feel like it goes really well with this. Um, and then mascara. I'll be right back. Okay, I completely forgot there is another item I wanted to use, so I already tightlined Violet Damask and then Amethyst right above. I forgot, I picked this up in Violette, the Le Pearl liquid liner, and I saw there was a blue one, they didn't have that, there was like a silvery one. I have the green one, but I wanted to use this right up along the lash line because this is the only one I can use that goes all the way to the beginning of my eye without changing the shape because it's such a fine point on here. So I love the applicator and I do already know that to remove some of it helps the process so there isn't an excess that can kind of end up where I don't want it to end up. So just starting way at the beginning and then right along lash line just to intensify it and there's a little bit of shimmer I'm not going to um, do a wing or anything with it I'm just using it to intensify it right along and even if you just want to lay it on top of the lashes and push it like this if you are not uh, well practiced yet with this you can do that as well so I just wanted to show you the difference in intensity when using something like this. It's one of those very, very small details that makes a big difference. So here it is with the liquid liner and without. Now I'm going to even this out, put on mascara. I'll be back. Okay. I think we're gonna just take a little bit of the blur powder and use that to blend this top part. So I'm just gonna go back and forth. I did take a little lilac rose underneath as well as a little bit of chocolate just right here. Those are two new shades to me, the Lilac Rose and Chocolat. So those are new. We're going to go in with this blush that I kind of forgot I didn't use yet. This is the 
Clay de Peau Blush Duo Powder in 105. And I thought it would go nicely with this more purpley tone. I love warm colors like blue and orange or purple and orange together. To me, this is orange. I mean, it's not orange, but it's definitely warmer. So let's go in with this lighter shade first and see how that goes. I'm not sure of the reflect. I can't remember how this swatched, so we're gonna find out together. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty. That's beautiful. It has a glow to it as well. You can kind of see the color here, what it really looks like. It's like an apricot shade, but it still has quite a bit of pink in it. I thought it was gonna be warmer. It's pretty. I'm taking it all the way to the front. This is more similar to the very first Clay de Peau blush, Clay de Peau blush that I tried that didn't have anything um, visible in terms of shimmer. The second one I tried did, which is why I didn't love that one as much, but this one is beautiful. So the first one I tried, I'll have to go back and see which one it was because I can't remember. They don't have names, they just have numbers, I think. That one was cool toned and this one is warm toned. But there's a bit of a terracotta, so it's not just like peach toned or apricot toned, it's a bit terracotta as well, like a hint of brown, beautiful. Not vibrant at all like the first one, but very subtle. <laughs> and not at all like the Pat McGrath blush that I recently tried. That was not subtle. Beautiful though, especially for those blush lovers. Okay, this particular shade is for those who have trouble controlling their blush. <laughs> like, actually this one's a good one for me because it's a little bit harder to go overboard on this quickly. Or if you just like a subtle glow. Yeah, that is gorgeous. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered that I didn't try this yet. So let's take the deeper shade. And it's an interesting color. It looks like it's going to be like an antique rose maybe right there. And I'm just adding it on the same brush. Yeah, it's got more of a brownish thing to it. So just know if you want something kind of muted, this is a good one. Wow, not actually what I was expecting, but pretty. So I'm wondering the lip to put with this. Oh, I forgot bronzer. That's another thing. Okay, so <laughs> I have the Le Bouche Rouge bronzer here, and this one is the second shade, right? This is, does it tell me the shade? So I saw three shades online, and I could not really tell what the shades were. This is Le Terre Brun, so it's, I believe, the second one, and I picked this because it looked warmer. The third one looked like it was a little bit more neutral or even cool-toned, so or it had some red tones in it. But this one looks like it's perfect for my skin tone. It's more of a golden tone, which I love. More of like a Guerin Long kind of bronzer tone. Beautiful. So let's go in with this. I'm really excited about this one. And I'm gonna use my Le Mer brush. I love using this brush for bronzer because it's a really diffused kind of look. I know it's a powder brush. Let me just get the excess off of here whatever was in here before. I'm just gonna take this and let's see. It's gonna be kind of light because, ooh, you know what? <laughs> Did you see how that turned into my neck color? It's almost the exact color of my neck. So here, let's look over here because it's lighter and then watch what happens. It turns the color of my neck. Wow, this is pretty. Actually, I think it was after I did the eyeshadow by this brand, Le Bouche Rouge, that I asked what else should I pick up and one of you mentioned the bronzer was really nice and I had already ordered it. So I was glad to hear that because I knew it was on the way. Ooh, beautiful. Okay, that's pretty. Now I wanna see it up close because I'm just looking in the viewfinder for the overall effect, but let me see what it looks like up close. Yeah, that's pretty, really pretty. Let's go on the forehead a little more. We'll be able to see the difference it makes. Yeah, I feel like if you are, if you are a fan of Guerlain bronzers, you will also really like this one in this shade particularly. I don't have the other two to compare it with, but I really like this one. Ooh, beautiful. 
Yeah, it's almost my exact tan shade. I love that. Really seamless as well. Nothing patchy about it. It's really smooth going on. So you can see here how it just melds with the skin. Oh, I think that might be my favorite thing I tried. I mean, I love the eye, but that is really pretty. Okay, let's go ahead with a lip. Now, I'm not sure what lip to pick. I just dropped my blush that already broke though. So it's already broken. <laughs> Joy, my Chantecaille blush. It's my Chantecaille the horse blush that already broke. Now it's really broken. Okay, well I was gonna get another one anyway, but that is sad looking down there. Okay, I'm tempted to try this because everything is so subtle and this is pretty bold. So this is Frangipane by Chantecaille Lip Veil. I might layer something over it. Let's see how this goes. Um, just in case, I'm gonna go in with the lip liner in natural, just to kind of even everything out. And I just lined the exterior. Actually, let's do calendula because that's nice and warm. We'll try that first and then we'll go in with something more bold. So calendula is a, like a corally color. So you could do something like this if you want some warmth and some hydration, but I really wanna see what this looks like because this looks really bold. Frangipane and we'll go, we will go right over this lip balm with it. Ooh, that is bright. Okay, actually, let me see. I wanna give it a fair shot because my lips are so chapped. Okay, so I actually just went in with the Lip Contour Fill, the Contour Fill, <laughs> and then the Natural Lip Liner, and then I went in just with Frangipane, and that's it. So I like that by itself, I think. Um, I think the balm underneath it was a little bit too hydrated for it to adhere well. So we're gonna go in with this vetiver, which I recently picked up. So I have vetiver cedra, and now this is vetiver. Top notes are citron, nutmeg, juniper, cypress. So you definitely get the green. I do sense the juniper in there. The mid notes have cedar wood and iris. You can smell the wood zenith there. Dry down vetiver, vanilla, and musk sandalwood. And if you are afraid of the vanilla, it's not that strong, but it's there. But mostly that sandalwood, the cedar wood. This is definitely a beautiful presentation. It's a little bit of that frosted glass effect there. And then this beautiful, it's like a disco ball top on there. <laughs> I love it though. Very classic, clean fragrance. Nothing heavy, nothing sweet about this one. So that is right up my alley. In fact, I wonder if there's a little bit more of that woodsiness in this one compared to the Vetiver Cedra. I will have to compare them for you, but let me know if you have both and what you think of them. But that is it for today's video. I Let's see, think about what I used here. I loved the eye shade, so pretty. I'd love to see what patchouli looks like in the mix there. I can see that as a beautiful, cool tone that works with both of these but those are a nice addition to my eight pan that I already have. And then what else do I use? Oh yeah, the liquid liner. I love that it is subtle, but makes an impact. I love their liquid liners. I've had now the green one and then this one. So I love those to go really close to that lash line, to enhance the lash line, make those lashes look fuller. And then we've got the bronzer, which again, stunning bronzer. I love this one. So you can see on my skin tone, it's just about, <laughs> my skin tone actually so you can see my i'm wearing a dress here but it's like this shade of my shoulder so that is a really beautiful match in case you're my skin tone and then this blush gorgeous blush from clay de Poe. a little more muted i'm going to say the same type of type of finish as the very first one that i tried but much more muted in its tone a little bit of warmth to it again more of a terracotta hue to it then maybe even a peach tone because you could see it going on and then here really mutes it down quite a bit. Love the finish, love that I can bring it all the way up here and not have an issue with the texture. 
actually both brow products I liked. I'd like to see how they do over time. So this was a great color match. I wouldn't draw myself. <laughs> Has a great color match to my brows. It's nice and cool. Went on easily, actually a little bit easier than I thought it would. Um, and I'm not sure if this is considered a wax brow product. Let's see. Brow pencil, wax and powder. Okay, so maybe that's why I had a bit of an easier time with this because it's not completely a wax kind of formula. It's got some powder, so a wax and powder formula. I like that, okay, because you know I love the <laughs> Gucci one and it's powder and that's what made it so unique for me. So this is a wax and powder. And the one advantage this has over Gucci is you don't have to sharpen it. But I would like to see if this gets dull or how dull it gets and how much control and precision precision I still have after I use this a while. Love the vetiver fragrance, beautiful. I can see myself using this daily. It's very much a me kind of fragrance. Definitely a woodsy base on that one. But that is it for the Get Ready With Me. It's always fun to try new products. I'm especially happy when they work out well like these did. I don't think there's anything in here that I didn't like. So we'll see how they do over time. But that's it for today's video. So please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.